Hello and welcome to the video series on how to publish ebooks to Amazon Kindle. Now, keep in mind that you have a lot of other things that you can publish to Amazon Kindle. For example, blogs, newspapers, magazines, and so forth. Now, in this particular video series, I'm going to primarily focus on ebooks. But keep in mind that you can pretty much publish, you can use this video series to publish other types of digital formats like blogs and things like that all you do is basically upload it I think in a different format but the process and everything else is pretty much the same thing with that said let's go ahead and get started now what I want to do is begin with a quick overview now in this quick overview I want to talk about the six videos in this particular video series I'm going to talk a little more about them so that you can get a good understanding then we're going to move on to talk about the tools that you're going to need and that we're going to use so that you have the tools ready before we actually implement the actual system. So video number one, of course, is this particular video. Video number two, we're going to talk about brainstorming and researching your market. Essentially, you know how to find ideas and topics that you could write your ebook on. And then how to figure out whether it's going to be profitable or not. Because remember, you can do as much brainstorming as you want. But if you don't do the proper research to make sure that there is indeed a hungry market of buyers for that specific niche, then you're really creating all this for nothing. So we want to plan ahead. We want to make sure that it's going to sell. So we got to brainstorm and then we've got to research the market. Of course, in video three it's all about writing an ebook that sells. We're going to talk about, you know, how you can write an ebook that sells. How do you plan ahead of time to ensure that the content inside the ebook is good enough that there're going to be people out there that are hungry to buy it. And of course in video number 4, we're going to talk about formatting your ebook. Now, with Amazon Kindle, you don't have to get really fancy, but there are a few things that you need to pay close attention like you know how to format your ebook you know starting it out writing it with microsoft word and then converting it to html format you know things like that now don't get worried you really don't have to know html or you know the programming language or anything like that we're actually going to use some free tools that you can use that are fairly easy to use Video number five, of course, after you format your ebook, you should have your ebook ready to go, which means video five, you're ready to publish and price it with Amazon DTB. Amazon DTB is, I believe it's digital something platform. I forgot what the acronym means, but essentially it's the same thing as publishing it on their Amazon Kindle. A very, very easy process to implement, and I'll show you that in that particular video. Video number six is promoting your ebook. Let's say that, okay, you've, you've finished your ebook, blog, whatever, formatted it, published it, uploaded, it's been approved. Now what, how do you promote your ebook? Well, now that it is on their marketplace, yes. If you correctly positioned it, you correctly entered the correct keywords and things like that, then you should be able to target the right person, right? Right. But you still want to be proactive about marketing and promoting your ebook. So we're going to talk about some tidbits and some tips and advice that will help you increase your exposure in terms of promoting your ebook on Amazon Kindle. Now, of course, why Amazon Kindle? Well, there's many, many factors as to why. You know, ebooks are cheaper and things like that. But on November 19th, 2007, Amazon released the first Kindle first generation. So within five and a half hours, it was sold out. Now, keep in mind that the device stayed remained out of stock for another five months until late April 2008. So that tells us that, wow. It was released, and guess what? It was sold out for several months. Approximately five months, about almost half a year. 
Now, the good thing about Amazon Kindle is there's a large demand. And it's easy to use. It's very user-friendly, even for newbies. You know, in fact, I was flying from on the airplane and, you know, next to me was this guy who knew little about technology. I, I even talked to him about it. But he felt like the Amazon Kindle was very user-friendly for him because he really didn't have to know all these apps. And I'm sure the iPod can read Amazon Kindle as fact, too. But, you know... There's a lot of people that the Amazon Kindle can reach out to, people that are not necessarily technologically savvy, but they want to be able to just use the Kindle for reading ebooks and things like that, and they want the convenience of that fact. Now, Amazon Kindle can publish on many different phones, not just the Amazon Kindle. It, so, as you can see, the market is huge. Ebooks are cheaper than the hard book covers. A lot of places that sell, you know, hardcover books, people can get the ebooks a lot cheaper on Amazon Kindle. But of course, you got to keep in mind that with Amazon Kindle, you got to buy a hundred dollar machine or hundred dollar product before you can actually buy the ebooks. But just keep in mind that in the long run. Ebooks are often cheaper than hardcover books. So that's a big selling point there. Now let's talk about the tools that you are going to need to be able to implement this system and publish your ebook onto Amazon Kindle. First, you're going to need Microsoft Word or OpenOffice because you're going to need to be able to create doc files and then, of course, convert that into HTML format. So I personally would recommend Microsoft Word. OpenOffice is free and it is out there. You can use it. I personally use Microsoft Word, which is widely used already. And then you're going to need an HTML editor, especially if you want to edit the HTML and things like that. You can convert a Word document into HTML format, which is fine. But with an HTML editor, you have a little more leeway as far as the look of your end product because Amazon Kindle does allow images and things like that Amazon likes HTML files there's nothing fancy about the tools that you're going to need in fact you don't need to go out and pay any money we're going to use a software called Moby Pocket Creator which basically allows you to convert your HTML files I believe and then protect them and things like that. Now let's talk about content guidelines. Essentially, you know, what does Amazon allow you to do and what does Amazon not allow you to do? Now, most of this slide is going to be made up of things that Amazon does not allow. For example, they do not allow pornography. They do not allow offensive material. Illegal items, stolen goods, recopied media. I think that's pretty much self-explanatory that, you know, most sites don't allow illegal stuff or pornography or, or, or adult material. What about the public domain? What about public domain material that you can, you know, use? Well, according to Amazon, they do allow that, but they may require you to provide proof you know, that you have copywritten some of that material. Hello and welcome to video number two, which is about brainstorming and researching your market. So before I actually show you step by step what to do, I want to briefly talk about it. The first thing we're going to do is brainstorm for ideas. And while we're brainstorming for ideas, our goal is to find a hungry market because if you just go all out and just create an ebook or a novel or things like that, then you're really setting yourself up for failure. And you don't want to do that because you your goal here is to find a hungry market and then provide a solution to that hungry market. It doesn't get easier than that. If you do it and you follow this step by step, then you will be able to create a plan of success. Now, keep in mind that when you write an ebook, it doesn't always have to be about you know, how to do this or how to do that. 
It can be novels. It can be fiction. You know, it can be just about any normal book. Because a lot of people think, oh, ebook. They're thinking digital book. They think how to book and things like that. So I just want to to let you know that first before we move on. All right, so when we find a hungry market, we're going to use Amazon.com. You can use other sites like ClickBank.com if you want. That's fine. Then we're going to create a table of contents. Now, table of contents can be generated fairly easily if you know how to do it. And then we're going to do the keyword test to ensure and to make sure that the market that we're about to get into is indeed profitable. And we're going to be using the free word tracker keyword tool. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started and implement this. So the first thing I'm going to do when brainstorming for ideas or finding a hungry market, I'm going to go to directly to Amazon.com's Kindle store. So you can find that by going to Google, typing in Amazon Kindle store, and you'll find the link at the top. All right, so we're looking right now at the Kindle store. And keep in mind that when you're brainstorming, you want to try to move closer towards ebooks that you're actually passionate about. The more passionate about something, the better you will be able to move forward, create the ebook, and relate to it, of course. And it, it, it becomes more fun if you do it that way. Now, if I scroll down, you'll notice on the left hand side, you know, they got best features, award winners, and then Kindle books. So you, you kind of want to get an idea of, you know, what kind of category you might be writing your ebook on. If you're writing a fiction, you might, it might take a long time just to keep in mind. But generally, how to ebooks are a lot easier to get up and running quicker. So let's say I go down here to the romance category just to see what kind of stuff yeah as, a, as we can see it's mostly fiction so if I type in something like let's say dating or online dating we see approximately 304 results and you can sort by you can sort by relevance best selling and things like that Generally, what I try to do is pick the best selling and, you know, so I can see, you know, what is on the top and what is on the bottom. Generally, what is on the top is more of the best sellers for Amazon. So you can get, kind of get an idea of like pricing, what your competitors are pricing their ebooks and what possibly you could price the ebooks as well because right now we're just brainstorming we're just trying to observe the market and observe our competition before we actually get in to getting into that niche you know things like that so we can see that roughly they're about anywhere from three dollars to fourteen dollars you see a few that are you know about 99 cents but for the most part I would say average by what I'm looking at right now is the average about five or six dollars and some of you might be thinking man there's 304 results but if you think about it really it even though there's competition competition is a good thing that means that there is a big buyer's market out there if you don't have any competition you might be a little bit worried because then you might think you know if if nobody's you know putting stuff out there products and stuff there's little competition yes that's good but is there an actual buyer's market so that's a good way to see it competition is a good thing all right so now that i'm searching for online dating and i say okay let's say that i'm going to go with this I could go through, you know, spend several hours more and go through and look for other niches. But for time's sake, because I'm doing a video series, 
let's say that I'm going to do it on online dating. So now what? How can I move from brainstorming, I found a hungry market, to you know, checking to see whether or not it's really profitable? Well, it's obvious that there are 304 results, so this niche must be very profitable. However, you just want to make sure, right? So to make sure, what we could do is go to, you could go to back to Google and type in Word Tracker free. You can use any other keyword tool you want. You can use Google AdWords keyword tool if you like, but I generally use the free keyword tool from Word Tracker. All right, so now that we have that, I can just type in something like online dating. You want to type in something that's pretty general. So we have online dating. You can see here possible sub niches of that niche. And all of these keywords I can see are very, very good. So I can click on that and see what sub niches are there. And I can also analyze competition and things like that. So let's say that I pick one of these keywords. Okay, so I did some keyword research and found that indeed there's a lot of searches going to the keywords for online dating. Um, but the next thing I want to do is actually start brainstorming in terms of the actual ebook. So what I could do is scroll back down or I could just scroll over here and click on best selling again. Might need to do that and then relevance. Change it back to best selling. And there we go. So I pretty much want to go through here and pick the highest I can go, but at the same time, something with, you know, online dating. So for example, this deals with online dating, the rules for online dating. Some of these, they will allow you to look at the table of contents. Some of them you cannot. Unfortunately, that one does not allow me to see the table of contents. But let's see if there's a dummies book, online dating for dummies or something. Okay, so I went back to all departments because I could not find a online dating for dummies Kindle version. But if I click on this, yeah, see, dummies books always have a table of contents. So if I click table of contents, you can actually see here the table of contents. So the point of this is just to get an idea of what possibly your table of contents could look like. Now I'm not promoting and telling you to plagiarize because that's definitely a wrong thing to do. But my point of showing you this is so that you can get some ideas on what your possible ebook can be about. Now I'm not saying copy it word for word or copy the table of contents. Just get an idea, look at different table of contents, just get an idea of different table of contents. So as you can see, it's fairly easy to do. Once we've done our research, we've brainstormed, we found a hungry market on online dating. We found lots of books as well as Kindle eBooks. We're looking right now at a table of contents and we did some keyword research to ensure that there are indeed people on the internet searching a lot for online dating. And it doesn't always have to be online dating. It could be a sub niche if you wanted it to be. But I just wanted to use this as an example. The next step is video three, which we're going to talk about. You know, we've done the research. How do you actually write an ebook that sells? 
So let's move on to that video. Hi, and welcome to video number three. We're going to talk about how to write an ebook that sells. Now, before I actually dive into showing you step by step how to create a ebook that sells, first of all, I want to address two things. Keep in mind that the value you create, the content value that you provide and you create, equals the value that you get in money. So don't come at the angle that, okay, all I have to do is create an ebook and slap a bunch of stuff together and sell it. That's, that's not how it works. You have to do planning. You have to kind of observe your competition. And it really doesn't take that much time to do that. But if you do the proper planning, you do the proper research, you should have no problem creating a good ebook after you watch this particular video. Second of all, you want to address the problems and concerns of a target market. So you might want to list out, you know, what are problems that this specific market faces? What are the concerns that they face? What, what keeps them up at night? If you know these things, then you can really address these things in the beginning of your ebook or your excerpt and things like that. So you can grab and pull them in. And once you have done that, then you can provide the solution. Then you can relate to them, things like that. So writing an ebook, you know, it really depends on what it is. If what I'm talking about now is really nonfiction type stuff, like how to do this or how to do that, training type stuff. But if you're, you know, writing a nonfiction novel, then that's a whole different world. But what I'm about to show you is a way to pretty much figure out, you know, how to write a good ebook, whether it's nonfiction, whether it's fiction, you know, whatever it might be. So there are two ways of writing an ebook. You can either hire somebody to write an ebook, proofread it, change it around a little bit, or you can write your own book. Now, if you before you actually write your book, you need to do a little bit of planning. You need to ask yourself, is this book a fiction novel or is it going to be a nonfiction novel or a nonfiction book? Because there are many different types of books. And if you want to get an idea of the different types of books, you could always go to Amazon. I know I keep telling you to go to back to Amazon, but guess what? You already have all the resources that you need. So you can go to books, textbooks, look around, get an idea of your passions, get an idea of, you know, you've already brainstormed, you've already figured out what you wanted to write about, but it's now it's time to write about it. So like I recommend earlier, go to similar books, figure out the table of contents of those books, which generally, if you don't want to guess, you can, you know, online dating for dummies, then you find a dummies book. The dummies book has a table of contents on it. So use that same method to figure out a table of contents. Now don't plagiarize. I repeat, do not plagiarize and do not copy word for word. This is simply to get an idea of what you can do. Now, once you know what to do, then, you know, you got the table of contents, then you can give it to the writer. In order for the writer to write a good book, they need to have a table of contents. If you just go ahead and tell them, hey, write a book on online dating, you're not going to get a book that is really good quality because you're really, they're interpreting, you know, the novel or the book in their own way. So if you want it done well, make sure you do the table of contents first and then give them the table of contents. That's how you do, you know, you create a good ebook. If you want to hire somebody, you can always go to several places. Now, Warrior Forum is a good place. If you go here and you look for warriors to hire, you can find a lot of good content writers. Most of these people are article writers. However, you can still find people that are ebook writers and you can I went through this the other day and you can find people that will write your ebook for anywhere from $97 to $127. Now, that's pretty cheap considering the fact that they're writing an ebook that will make you money on and on on autopilot for a long time. Now, if you don't want to invest the money, then you can always write your write it yourself. Another good site is guru.com. I've had a lot of great experience with guru.com. I would not recommend sites like Odesk 
you know, script lance, rent a coder, and sites like that. You may be able to find good writers there, but for the most part, I have had more success with Goober.com and WarsForum.com. Now, it's not to say never ever use Odesk.com or never ever use Rentacoder.com. For the most part, I found that you can find better writers on Guru.com. And I found people to write articles, press releases, and things like that from Guru.com. So Guru.com, Elance.com is probably a good one too. I've, I've not personally used Elance, but I've heard a lot of good things about the site. It's a big site. So you can use those two sites or any other sites to have your ebook written. But what I recommend you do though is if you, once you give the table of contents, ask them to write the, the first part first or the first few pages first and then look over them and just make sure that the ebook is headed the right direction. The worst thing you can do is give the table of contents to the writer and have them write the whole book and realize that's not exactly what you want. So, Make sure that you go step by step. Plan the process out, plan your ebook out first, and then tackle that. Now, if you're going to write a fiction novel, it might be a little harder to, you know, outsource that specific task. But as you can see, creating ebooks are indeed actually a very, very easy thing to do. Now, you might be asking, well, what about private label rights articles? Private label rights articles, I mean, yes, yes and no. I mean, you can't just take a bunch of private label articles and pl plop them together and then that be your ebook. You just don't want to do that, especially if you're going to put your name on it. If you do that route, make sure that somebody goes through and rewrites all of them, either in your own words or have them rewrite everything. If you do that, rewrite it plus add or remove onto it. If you remove some stuff and then you add some stuff, then you will make it a better ebook. Now, you're thinking, oh, wow, this is pretty simple. Creating ebooks is a very simple thing to do depending on what it is. If it's a novel, you might have to take a week or a few weeks. If it's a how-to product, which most products out there are informational how-to, then it's a lot easier. Hello and welcome to video number four, which is all about formatting your ebook. Before we actually dive into the first two steps, I want to talk about a quick overview. So, step one, we're going to check the ebook to make every, sure everything is okay. Step two, we're going to convert the Word document to HTML. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a free software tool called Moby Creator Publisher version. It's free. You don't have to invest any money. And then of course step three is we're going to be formatting the book one step further. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so step one we need to look through the ebook just to make sure everything is correct. So just want to make sure everything looks good. So I'm going to make sure there's no humongous white space breaks or anything like that. So it'd be wise to go through and, you know, check, double check everything. And then once you're done, what I'm going to do right now, it's in docx format. I want to save it in just plain doc format. So I'm going to pick on this format here, click on save. And then I'm going to close this out. So this is the file that I want to convert. Now, what I need to do now is go to mobypocket.com. So, if you go to mobypocket.com, you click on software at the top here. You scroll down, you will notice on the right hand side that you can create ebooks with this tool. Now, there are two versions there's a home version and a, there's a publisher version. Publisher version allows you to protect the distribution of copyrighted content. So if you wrote your ebook, you definitely want to protect it, right? So in this case, you want to download the publisher version. 
So I clicked on that. And you notice the publisher version when it says protect the distribution of copyrighted content. So I'm going to go ahead and download this file. Click download. And it's a 10 megabyte file, so I'm just going to go ahead and pause this and resume it after I have installed this software program. And before I install it, I, I want to make sure that you understand that when you do, download the Mobi Pocket Creator, when you install it, you will have two choices, the Home Edition or the Publisher version. Publisher Edition is for advanced users, but that's what you need to pick. So click on Next and click on Next and install it. Okay, so I successfully installed the Mobi Pocket Creator and what I want to do is it says import from existing file. Now I have an MS, an MS Word document so I want to find browse to find that fold file. So I'm going to go here, click on browse, find the file and then it says create publication in this folder. So I essentially just want it to be in, in the same folder. And language is going to be English and encoding is going to be by default Western. So I'm going to click on import and within a few seconds it should save it to the HTML file. Alright so we see here that we have the HTML file. You know if you have an image you can add an image and the table of contents here as well book settings and other things like that so but since it's just I'm just gonna keep it simple for now so I'm gonna leave it like this if we, you you want to take a look at the HTML file to see what it looks like it'll be located in here so we'll open this up in Google Chrome and we can see it here So the next step in this process is to go to Google and download a program called Composer. Just as you can see here and we'll click on download. So I want you to download this here, install it and then op open up a Composer which is going to look like this. So you can open this, this uh, program up and then click on open find the HTML file that has generated by the Mobi Creator. Once that's done, then what we can do is start formatting the document. So now we need to finalize the formatting of the ebook. Now keep in mind that font sizes can be achieved using headline tags or heading tags. So I'm going to show you that in just a minute. So if you want to, you know, make your headings bigger then you can use h1, h2, h3 tags. And now keep in mind that Amazon Kindle, if you have page breaks in your book and you don't tell Amazon Kindle where the page breaks are, they're just going to break it wherever they feel like it's going to break. So it's pretty much automatic. So you want to tell you know Amazon Kindle where to break the tags or or where the page breaks are going to be so this is the tag that you would use in front of the wherever you want the page break to be table of contents to tell Amazon Kindle you know where your table of contents is you want to have the specific tag in front of it now, if you have images within your ebook, which is optional, you don't have to have images. If you do have images, then you're going to need to use a program called Mobi Pocket Creator. And I'm going to show you all of this in just a minute. Okay, so now my job now is to clean it up as we looked at in step three. So step three, we need to go through and every headline make it into an H1 tag or H2 tag. Now how do you do that? Well, if you highlight the headline and you click on this here, 
click on heading one then you will notice it says h1 so we've created an h1 tag click on save now one thing I want to show you if we click on source don't be shocked and don't be scared yet because you don't really have to know anything about how to program HTML all you really need to know is that when the HTML file is created by Word, whether you use Word, whether you use Moby Creator, it's going to add a bunch of fluff to it. So we do need to clean up the code and remove some tags. So for example, this inline stuff you really don't need. And what I mean by tags, tags are noted by you know a less than a greater sign. And another thing are span tags. You don't need span tags. So for example, you're gonna see a lot of span tags where it starts out with span, style, font size, 14 font, you know, and it goes all the way and ends in this tag here. What we can do is we can remove that. And let me show you, if we remove this, when we go back to the normal preview, you'll notice that the text changes, right? Because this text here, you know, this text here is basically, you know, clean. This text here is not. So what you will need to do is you'll need to go through and basically remove those span tags. Now you're thinking, oh, oh my, oh my word, this is going to be a really difficult task. But here's a fast trick. What you can do is this. You'll notice the pattern of P class, you know, blah, 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 all that stuff. So if I highlight the span text, right, and I copy it, and I go up here, click on edit, find replace, what I can do is click on find text and paste that here. So it's not going to work. I guess it's a different line, so I'm I'm going to have to do this. Um, yeah, click on edit, click find replace, put that in there, and then just keep that blank. If I click keep that blank, then I remove the second line, which is this, as you can see here. Click on edit, find and replace, do the same thing, keep that empty, replace all. So as you can see here, I pretty much removed all of the text, you know, all of the, I cleaned it out pretty much by just taking one line and then editing find and replace putting the code in here and replacing with nothingness and then as you can see we have clean code there you go now just a few other things uh, font sizes heading okay page breaks so Remember, Amazon Kindle will just automatically put page breaks into your document. This document, I don't have a table of contents, but you'll just need to put this tag in front of the table of contents. And I don't have images, but if you do have images, it would be wise to use the Moby Pocket Creator. So for simplicity, I'm just going to keep it at that. And another thing if you want to do is if you click on tools, click on markup, cleaner, click on cleanup. I did that earlier and I got seven and then it cleaned that out. So that also helps you clean the, the document here. So once that's done, we're pretty much done. We can close that out. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, I am still kind of confused, you can always go back to Amazon's, if you go to, if you type in Amazon DTP or forums.digitaltextplatform.com, 
you'll be able to find you know more information about Amazon the the formats that they accept you know are the following you know HTML they also accept HTML that's exported from Microsoft Word for example you you don't really have to go through the process I did unless you you know add images or things like that but it also uses the Mobi Pocket Creator Word format EPUB format PDF format and things like that so if you're ever confused you know, about other formats that you can use you can always come back to this here and you can also see sample formatting and get some samples and examples of that too if you want more examples hello and welcome to the video number five which is all about publishing and pricing with Amazon DTP now before we get started I want to talk about some basic information publishing wise we're going to use the website which is Amazon DTP it's a website that gives you the ability to upload your files to the site and then you can you know choose publishing features options and then pricing and things like that now we recommend that you do it about $9.99 or lower because most of the Amazon Kindle ebooks are $9.99 or lower and there's different pricing structures that Amazon Kindle gives you uh, there's actually two ways of making money and I'll go into that a little further when I actually show you how to use the site now remember that we talked about researching and brainstorming your ebook well if you remembered we actually showed you how to go to Amazon and observe your competition so it's very important to observe the Amazon Kindle competition that is going against you because if you can think okay most of these books are 999 or around that number and they're all on the high end that means you can position yourself on the high end as well and maybe start a little bit on the lower end but if all the books are you know 199 to 399 then guess what you might have to stick around that lower end if you go to further and all the books in that area are a certain price then your ebook may not be sold as much so that's just something to keep in mind so with that said let's move on and upload the files and choose different options and I'll show you what to do in just a minute okay so this is the fun part on this part I want you to go to the internet and go to dtp.amazon.com at this location you can log in if you don't have account then go ahead and sign up since I already do have an account I'm gonna go ahead and sign in okay so I just logged into Amazon DTP and what I need to do is simply click on add new title at this page it's uh, fairly easy to fill out all you have to do is fill out your book information and then the rights and pricing now before you get started you will need a few things you're going to need the document or the ebook which can be in doc format PDF format or HTML now remember we talked about you know converting the doc to HTML you can use the doc file if you want but the purpose of showing you all of that was you know in case you do use images and things like that but it was just a good learning experience to be able to know how to use a WYSIWYG tool which can apply later on too as well but anyways for the book basics you're going to need your title you're going to need the author information the description keywords and roughly the price that you want to put now I'm going to give you and show you different options that you can price and revenue sharing and things like that so enter the title and if this is part of a series then you can click this checkbox enter the series title and enter the volume of course this is not part of a series so I don't need to enter that edition number I don't need to enter that too 
the description is what people are going to see when they go to the Amazon marketplace so you'll want to make sure that you enter the correct keywords into the description box here you will be able to enter keywords as well optional but I would highly recommend that you do that I recommend entering the keywords not only here but entering the keywords in description here in you know format of a description So I'm not going to enter the whole thing, but you kind of get the idea. If you want to kind of get some templates, you can always go to Amazon.com. Go find a similar product. And I don't recommend that you copy word by word or anything like that, but Let's say for example dating rocks you can kind of get an idea okay of the title and the product description here this is this is what people are going to see so make sure that you list you know you can list your table of contents and things like that but you can go here get an idea of what other people are are listing for their description especially successful Amazon Kindle books and then kinda of get an idea and enter your own information here but I don't recommend plagiarizing definitely not but you can always go there and look at it so that you have a good idea of what to put so once you've entered the description then you can add book contributors book contributors are basically the authors so you want to enter your first name and your last name you can add several contributors if you want to let's say you partnered with another person or you interviewed someone else and they are your co-author on that book so you could add another person and then you can select the title you can have an author an editor illustrator forward narrator introduction things like that So go ahead and add that and we'll click on save and I'll see you on the other side. Once you're done with that, then you can enter the publishing details. The language, of course, is going to be in English. Publication date today is August the 5th. Publisher in ISBN. Now, these are optional, so I'm going to leave that blank. Publishing rights. Remember that I talked about that Amazon does allow you to include public domain works but they will require you to provide you know information pr and proof on that this is not a public domain work so I'm gonna click no then you want to browse and search for categories since this is online dating it's probably going to be in the romance section if there is a romance section let's see here uh, there is no romance section but I'm sure we can find something maybe family and relationships love and romance life stages we could target certain life stages you know, school age teenagers alright so once you're done click on save and then you will want to enter your keywords it says optional but I recommend that you enter your keywords because when people are trying to find you they're going to be entering those keywords to find you and if you don't know what keywords to rank on you could even look at successful Kindle ebooks just to get an idea alright so if I go back here and you search for keywords or tags you will see the tags that are associated with this product so you could even use the same tags in your results so dating online dating relationships 
if it's dating for women, then put dating for women. If it's dating for men, you know, dating for women, dating for men. So those could be our keywords, but it says it's optional, but I highly recommend that you do that. Then you'll need to upload your product image. This is optional, but you, as like I like the keywords, you just need to upload that as well. Now I don't have a product image for this example, so I'm going to skip that. But if you're doing this, you definitely want to find somebody to create an image for you. If you don't know where to create, you know, book images, then you can look for somebody who is familiar with e-cover designs. And sometimes I go to places like warriorforum.com and I look under for example, Warriors for Hire, and then I look for people that can design book covers. Now, keep in mind that if you are hiring somebody to do a product image, you make sure that the images they get are legally, you can actually use them. So I would recommend you go to a site called Big Stock Photo and go through, look for pictures, and then send them to the designer so that, you know, your image product image cover is legitimate with that aside book content says select a digital rights management what this means is that whether or not you want to protect it so if I enable digital rights management that means that people cannot share the ebook if I don't really care then people can share that if they want but in this case it's an actual book I will want to protect that now you want to select the book content file. So click on browse for book. And like I said, you can select the HTML file, you can select the doc file, or you can select any PDF file. In this case, I'm going to select the HTML file and click upload book. Now it's converting the book file to Kindle format. And then we'll click save and continue. As you can see, it, it's uh, perfectly uploaded and converted. We can actually preview the book if we want to. So we can see it, it looks good. So we're good to go. We can save and continue. and now we're looking at content rights because I want to reach everybody I'm just going to put worldwide rights I really don't care about specific territories the only time you would really worry about you know specific territories is if your book was let's say in a specific state you know your book was specific for a specific country then you might want to click the territories now Amazon DTP they give you two options they give you 35 percent royalty or 70 percent royalty now you're probably thinking okay why wouldn't I want the 70 percent well that's about all about pricing if you price your book more than 999 then you're going to have to click this if it's less than 999 then you get 70 percent royalty now keep in mind what is your competition if it's all the all, uh, all the books are book fourteen dollars you know twelve dollars ten dollars I recommend going with nine ninety nine because you get seventy percent royalty plus you might stick out because you're a lot cheaper so I'm gonna do that and then the list price I'm gonna put it as nine ninety nine delivery fee we're gonna allow it to calculate it so delivery fee is six ninety nine or that's actually the amount that you get your royalty and then Amazon takes the rest once we're done you click the checkbox and then you click save and publish and then I believe within 48 hours for English books they pretty much will approve it otherwise they'll tell you what to fix but two to three days for non-English books and if you're not ready to publish it yet you can always click save for later 
But that's pretty much how to do it and within 48 hours, depending on what your book is, it should be approved and it should get onto Amazon.com. So as you can see, it's fairly easy to publish and price your book. So the next video I'm going to talk about, you know, what next? How do you promote your ebook? And just keep on in mind that on autopilot, you are going to be able to make, you know, a couple hundred dollars, but you want to take that further and it'll make a lot more money. But how do you do that? So let's talk about that in the last video. Congratulations, you are at the end of this video series. You're at video six. We're going to be talking about promoting and marketing your ebook on Amazon Kindle. Now, you might be thinking, oh no, I've got to do a lot of marketing like SEO, search engine optimization, I've got to do PPC, Google AdWords, this and that. Now, what I want you to do is think simple. Put aside the PPC, put aside all of this marketing that you already know. If you don't know any of that, then great. Because I'm going to show you some simple steps that you can implement starting today that actually can build relationships and get more sales and more potential prospects to your Amazon page to buy your ebook for Amazon Kindle. You can use the same method with regular Amazon ebooks. Now, just a brief idea we're going to talk about, you know, including a link on your personal website to the Amazon page where your book is listed. Now, that is pretty simple. Do that first. Second of all, we're going to talk about reviews, customer reviews. We're going to talk about Amazon community, how to get involved with people in the community. And then we're going to talk about observing your competition. So with that said, let's go to Amazon and let me show you how to do this. All right, so the first step, make sure that you put a link to your Amazon Kindle page from your personal website. And what might be a good idea is I would recommend that you create a post that has information on it. For example, a blog post. You don't necessarily have to say buy, buy, buy. Provide some information. You can grab some of your best information out of your ebook and put it on a blog post. Now, you don't have to put all of your good information, just a snippet, it's just an excerpt just something that will pull somebody in and build a relationship and build trust and then somebody might be interested in purchasing your Amazon Kindle ebook or your Amazon book whatever you're promoting so that's the first step the second step is to go on amazon.com and become part of the community so it says what's your interest online dating We can find like-minded people or people who are in the same situation or people that are looking for this type of information in the Amazon community. Now, that doesn't mean to go to the Amazon community and just start spamming people and start telling people, hey, buy this, hey, buy that. But you want to be an active person in there and start providing useful information, possibly about online dating. So as you can see, romance is a big thing, so you can always find information, you know, see discussions about online dating and things like that, or even start a new discussion. If you can start a new discussion, you can be controversial. Controversial also builds a lot of eyes and a lot of traffic to your page. So that's the second step. Third step is to become a Amazon affiliate so that you can begin to sell Amazon ebooks and things like that. Now, you could place your Amazon affiliate, you know, your promotion on your page, your ebook on your page, but it's unlikely that you can go to your competition and ask them to promote for you. But here's what I found, if you go to other places like ClickBank, and you find people who are in a similar niche, maybe not exactly online dating. You could find somebody that talks about dating, but not exactly online dating. 
and they can still be your joint venture partner. So you can go to ClickBank's marketplace, go to their marketplace, find products that are similar, and then see if you can do maybe a joint venture or something. So that would be the third step, affiliate program. Fourth step is to take your blogs, your blog posts, and or even find similar sites. So you can go to Google Blogs, for example, and type in online dating, find online dating blogs, and then read the articles, respond to them, and put a link back to your Amazon site or to your blog posts or anything like that. Blog bloggers and people that write blogs are actually good sources of traffic because people go there for information and guess what they build a relationship with the person and then you can sell or pre-sell I wouldn't say hard sell because you're not telling people to buy 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 you're trying to get people to get to your site and then after you've built that relationship then you can sell so I would recommend blogs Google blogs blogsearch.google.com as well as Technorati, if you type in Technorati blogs and Google, you'll find this page and you can search for blogs here as well. And you can search for WordPress blogs and Google as well. Those are the most basic steps that you can take and you can do it all within a day of actually submitting your ebook or your Amazon book or whatever you're promoting. Those are the simple steps that I would recommend that you take immediately. Then you can go forth and do pay-per-click marketing, SEO, or whatever other marketing that you want to do. But these are basic enough that you can do it all in a day.